think about money and respect. I didn't give a fuck. It was all about me and what I could get. Nothing else mattered. Until I met Sunny. The vibrant girl that lit up my world of darkness. The most adorable girl in the world with, the, with braces on her teeth, light freckles on her nose, and the monkey hair clip I gave her when we started dating, and her beautiful long blonde hair. The affectionate and hyper little girl I met when I was 15 and she was 14, who would hug me 20 times a day, the hugs I looked forward to every single day. Feeling the warmth of her body and of her breath, and the smell of apples coming from her hair that comforted me. It was easy to hate everyone, but she was one I could never hate. I always thought it was love at first sight, but I didn't know how I felt to love someone. I did know that if I could feel love for anyone in this world, it would be Sunny. I waited outside Sunny's class. She walked up to me with a smile, her braces reflecting the sun's rays at my eyes. She closed her mouth quickly and laughed as she reached for my hand and intertwined our fingers together. You know my hands get sweaty, I said, as she laughed and laid her head on my arm. I love every part of you, even your sweaty hands. <laughs> it was a windy day. Sunny's arms began to form goosebumps as I saw her rubbing her arms with her hands. I took off my sweater and I put it on her. The sweater was multiple sizes too big. The sleeves were hanging down the sides of her body and the bottom of the sweater reached down right above her knees. Are you not cold, Stevie? A little. <coughs> but I'll have you to keep me warm. As I kneeled down in front of her and she hopped on my back. I felt her breathing on the back of my neck and ears as I carried her. She would blow into her hands and place them on my face. I would carry on my back every day until we got to her house. Her legs were so short that it was hard for her to keep up with the long strides. Her house became like another home for me. We shared hours together talking. We even shared our first kiss in that house. Her parents being workaholics, Sunny was always home alone with her grandma, who couldn't even take care of herself. She would always ask me to stay with her until it became routine for me to sleep over to where she didn't even have to ask anymore. We would have movie nights every night until we fall asleep in each other's arms and wake up the same way. I never wanted those moments to end. The next day I found out my mother's cancer had gotten worse. I was in denial of ignoring everything that had been said and going on with my day as if nothing had happened. Cocaine helped fog my mind. I was too blind to see what I was doing to Sunny as I brought cocaine into her life. The one person I wanted to keep safe I let her get engulfed in the darkness. The consumption of cocaine became worse and worse. I was dependent on it to get through each day. Sunny became addicted. The girl who once lit up my world started to dim. A few weeks later, I went to see my mother. As she laid in bed skinny and weak, her skin the color spoiled milk with bruising from the needles dug in her. Promise me that you will care for our family, keep our family together, as she put out her pinky towards me. Promise me. As our pinkies hooked onto each other like two fishing lines getting tangled together. I promise. The next year in the early summer of 2006, my mother left this world. I watched as she fought for each breath until I heard the constant noise of the flat line. Tears ran down my face as I placed my mother's hand beside her. I fell to my knees, my father putting his hands on my shoulders. My heart began to cramp up in pain from the guilt that I, I felt that I wasn't there for her. I stopped selling and I shaved my old self away. Sunny didn't deserve any of this. I was ashamed of myself that I couldn't protect her. I needed to let her go. Sunny, we need to take a break from each other for a little bit. Sunny turned around. What? I saw the tears from the only woman that ever see me. The woman who has loved me unconditionally. She's in love with the person I hated the most. The person that has led her in the wrong directions. I need to better myself. Not only for myself, but for you as well. I wipe the tears from my face. If it takes months or even years, we will find each other. I don't want to part from you, Stephen. I forgive you for everything. So please stay with me. The big blue innocent eyes that have shed more tears than I deserve. I will be back for you. 
then I'll be a man worthy of your love. Leave me, leave me be for now. Don't call me. Don't come looking for me. I gave her one last kiss, then walked over, never looking back once, even when she called my name. I went to hiding as I cowered in my house, afraid of being recognized for who I was. For about five months, I hid in the darkness of my room, watching through a window as life went by. I stayed true to my promise, keeping myself home and watching over the family who had only seen my back for the past three years. Sonny also being my family. I never forgave myself for what I have done to Sonny. Separating myself from her was the best for her, but I was dying without her. The phone began ringing more than usual that day. It was Sunny. I hesitated if I should answer. She could be in trouble. Sunny? I heard her crying over the phone. Help me, Stephen. I hung up the phone and I ran to her house, which was about 15 minutes away. I ran from my mother's illness in denial of how sick she really was. I wasn't going to lose Sunny the same way I lost her. I got to her house, my clothes soaked in sweat. She's balled up in the corner of her room, her lips dry and her eyes filled with tears. My Stevie, with her arms, her arms extended out to me. Her hands were hot and sweaty and her body was shaking with the chills. I picked her up and laid her down into her bed. I then chopped up a rock of cocaine. Please help me, my Stevie. I rolled up a $5 bill. Then I raised a line of cocaine to her face. She snorted and laid back down in relief. Stay with me, my Stevie. I carried her to the bathroom and helped her take a shower. The woman who once smelled of a variety of different fruits smelled like a sewer. I got her out of the shower and I dried off her hair and then wrapped her body in a warm towel. I got her dressed and laid her back into her bed. I got under the blanket next to her as she scooted closer to me and wrapped her arms around my body. My hands on the brittle body of the woman that was once soft and smooth, now rough and bony. I love you. She puckered her lips and I leaned in to kiss her. Her lips like sandpaper. I talked to Sunny when she woke up and I explained to her the importance of her getting help. You don't love me anymore? Are you tired of me? She said. You need to get better before we can get better together. It didn't take long. The family knew some people in Chicago that could get her <coughs> the help she needed. I drove her to the airport where her parents were waiting for her. The look of fear on their faces as they saw their daughter. Her mother charged me, hit me in the face and chest. You bastard. How could you do this to my baby? I kept my arms at my side and stood there as every hit became harder and harder. Her father finally getting her mother off me. Sunny held my beat up face in her hands. The tender cuts caused by her mother scratching my face with her long nails. The father pushed me away from Sunny, wrapping his arms around her as they walked away from me. I followed from a distance. Her father noticing me as he passed Sunny over to her mother and he walked towards me. Don't she ever come near my daughter again? You monster. Look what you have done to her. If I see you again, I will do much worse. Sunny turned around, her eyes overflowing in tears and her face red. Her mother holding her hand tightly as she tugged her mother's arm and was released from her grasp as she ran to me. Her head slammed into my chest and her arms wrapping around my body. She looked at, at me and smiled as she grabbed my head and pulled me down for a kiss. I love you, Stevie. I took one last look at my Sunny before watching her away. The next year I began taking classes at New York Community College. I got so bored that Homer sounded like fun to me. And that was just strange. There was never a day I didn't think of Sonny. That I wasn't too late saving her from the aftermath of my old self. It had been seven months since I saw her last at the airport. I kept my distance from her because she didn't deserve to be reminded of the past that I'm unable to forget. I took the bus home from school one day. I turned the corner onto my street. I looked upon my iPod. Stevie, I heard a familiar voice say. I looked up and saw the vibrant girl that I remembered running towards me. Was this a dream? She jumped to me with her arms around my neck and her legs around my waist, my arms hanging down the side of my body as I was in disbelief that it was really hers. 
I released her arms from around my neck and I placed her back to her feet. I looked upon her face, her light freckles on her nose, running my fingers through her beautiful long blonde hair. The monkey clip I gave her four years ago was in her hair. I slid my hands along her body, feeling her smooth, soft skin. It really is you, I said. As tears fell down my face as I placed my hands on her cheeks. I lifted her up and I held her tight, closing my eyes to the smell of apples. I missed you so much, she said. I missed you too, my son. Thank you.